Welcome to the Halton Waste Management site. Today we will see what happens when garbage rots, gas is produced, what we do with that garbage, how it is harnessed, and how we turn an environmentally bad thing into an environmentally good thing by harnessing the gas, putting it into an engine, and producing electricity. We will take you on a tour to see all the different components that are involved with this project. A project completed by Oakville Hydro and Halton Region together. So this is where it all starts. Your garbage that you put out in the morning at the curb is collected by the garbage truck, hopefully minus your blue box materials of course. The garbage is collected in the truck, the truck comes here. It's dumped, we pack the garbage with our machines because the more we compact the garbage, the more space we save. Uh, this is where the landfill gas is formed. Landfill gas is formed by bacteria. Uh, bacteria that do not use oxygen. For the bacteria to do well, they need organic material, they need a little bit of moisture and no oxygen. That anaerobic decomposition of the garbage produces the byproduct of methane. We have approximately 21 vertical wells on the closed part of the landfill site. With closed part, I mean the landfill that has been fully filled with garbage and has a layer of three meters of clay fill on top of it. Uh, in that area, we put in vertical wells. Uh, this is one well that you can see here. We're standing on approximately 15 to 18 meters of garbage and this pipe goes almost to the bottom of the landfill site. Uh, the first 10 feet is a solid pipe. After that, the pipe becomes perforated. Uh, the hose connected to the well, this gray hose, is the hose that <coughs> creates, the, through which the vacuuming is applied to the well. So that draws the landfill gas out of the system into the header. So each well has a lateral that is connected to the header and the header goes around and goes into the blower building where all the gas gets into. This, we're standing on the covered part over here. This is where we have the vertical wells. On the open or active site, where garbage is being buried, underneath the garbage we have put in horizontal wells. So instead of drilling vertical wells, we have dug a trench through the garbage and put in a perforated horizontal pipe. And on the ends of the pipe, we have put again a connection through which we can draw a vacuum of this horizontal pipe. So the gas, the landfill gas in the landfill, in the garbage, is being extracted by this vacuum, go to, goes to the header, and via the, via the header, into the building again. So this is where really all the gas is being, is being formed. Prior to us putting wells in this landfill, the gas naturally vents through cracks in the soil into the atmosphere. Uh, which is a normal occurrence. Uh, methane is 21 times worse of a uh, greenhouse gas contributor than regular CO2. So by us extracting the methane and burning it, we're doing a lot of good to the environment by not allowing the methane to escape to the natural environment. As a matter of fact, we're putting this methane to good use by running it through an engine and generating power. We're standing now in front of the blower building. Inside this blower building, we can find two large blowers. These two blowers create the vacuum that controls the landfill gas. That vacuum sucks the landfill gas out of the landfill gas and brings it into this building. At, at, at this point in time, since the engines are not hooked up yet, we are burning off the gas in this large flare. Uh, the flare has, is set at a certain temperature to ensure that whatever is in the landfill gas is totally combusted. 
and it also ensures that the uh, retention time of the gas in this flare is at a certain set point. Uh, if you look at the top of the pipe, you can see there is no smoke, no black smoke or flames coming out of it, and that tells you that it is a clean burn. This is the gas analyzer. It monitors, monitors the contents of the gas. It monitors for methane and for oxygen. And at this point in time, you can see that the methane concentration is about 57% and the oxygen is only 0.5. This is very, very good. It means that we have a lot of methane and extremely little oxygen coming out of the site. This is what we're looking for, this is what we want. We do not want too much oxygen. Too much oxygen can create potential fires within the landfill site, and the, it's not optimum for the engines as well. So the higher the methane concentration, the better it is. Once the blowers draw the landfill gas out of the landfill, um, they essentially come into this series of piping over here that allows us to divert the gas either to the flare, where they would just normally be burned off, or uh, only to these two pieces of equipment over here uh, that allows us to clean the gas. Clean the gas in this context is to remove the moisture and to uh, remove some of the impurities that will allow us later to remove some of the impurities from the gas so that it burns cleaner in the engine and extends the, the lifespan of, of the engine. Um, so, in here are uh, these two essentially heat exchangers. It goes to, series, uh, to another pipe that leads outside of the building and eventually ends up at the engine where we use it to produce power. So, this is the control panel that controls the two um, blowers as well as the flare. On the readout, we can read uh, the temperature of the actual flare and also the retention time. So once the gas is, is treated in a preliminary fashion in the blower building by extracting, uh, extracting the moisture, uh, it gets directed outside of the building and it comes to these, uh, these two vessels that are right here. Uh, the purpose of these two vessels is to reduce some further contaminants from the gas. Uh, siloxanes primarily. Siloxanes are compounds that if they, over time, if they're allowed to get into the engine, will solidi solidify and potentially cause a long-term problem. Once it goes through these two vessels and, and the gas is cleaned up, it's directed to the engines where, uh, where the gas is, com is combusted and used to turn a generator that, that generates electricity to send the power out into the grid. This is our engine compartment. We, uh, we have an engine much like your car at home, only this is a monster. This is 20 cylinders creating power. Now there's cylinders which fire with spark plugs exactly like your car, but instead of turning a set of wheels, we're turning this device here called a generator. This is a synchronous generator. When excited, we'll put energy to the grid. We will be creating 1.5 megawatts through this generator alone. Once the gas goes past these, vessel, uh, these vessels, uh, it gets directed to the engines and those are the two pieces of equipment that you see behind me. Um, on top of those uh, two pieces of equipment you'll see some stacks and you will also see uh, some large uh, heat exchangers. The heat exchanger is essentially the same type of thing as a radiator in your car. Uh, when the gas is combusted in the engines it not only generates electricity but it also generates a significant amount of heat. And that heat has to be dispersed and the way it's dis dispersed is not only through the stack um, but also through the heat exchangers that you see on top of the units. This here is the HMI, known as the Human Machine Interface. This is the computer program that helps me control the engine and how it operates. It gives us system information as, a, as much your car, instead of having to gauge on your dash, it's given us a digital readout and a picture of the system. There's a couple of variables in here to let me see how hot the engine's running, the flow of the engine, how efficiently the engine's running, and uh, that will help me in my daily process out here for creating energy. Okay, so once the power is produced at the, uh, at the two engines, um, uh, it's, it's fed over here to this switch, switch gear room uh, and then to the transformer that you see in green behind me. The transformer is actually sized uh, with a capacity of four megawatts. 
the transformer then feeds that power out through a dedicated pole line that ties into a uh, distribution system of Milton Hydro, uh, which feeds the power back into the general grid. Um, the reason the transformer is sized for 4 megawatts is currently the landfill is only generating sufficient gas for 2 megawatts of power. But the plant is designed with expansion in mind so that as the landfill gas gets, uh, gets filled up, we can continue to, to collect that gas and, and use it efficiently by adding more engines and generating more power. Uh, together with Oakville Hydro, we went to some close landfill sites where uh, already gas was being extracted and being used as an energy source. And that really was the starting point for us to uh, set the project to go. And under the deal between the Oakville Hydro and the region, the, the region carried no financial or operating risk with respect to the operation of the plant, but it will share in the financial upside of the project. Um, we joined the revenue on the sale of the, um, of the electricity to the grid where the region and Oakville Hydro are splitting the revenue. The project has a number of advantages from an environmental point of view. If the landfill gas, number one, if it wasn't captured and just allow, allowed to um, essentially leach out of the landfill or leak out of the landfill into the atmosphere, the, the methane that, that leaches out has a contribution to uh, greenhouse, greenhouse gases, which is 21 times what it would normally be uh, as opposed to, to combusting it. So that's, that's contribution number one. Contribution number two is that by taking that gas and burning it in these engines, we're actually uh, creating, generating two megawatts of power, uh, which is, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a significant amount in the context that it's being generated out of effectively something that would have leached out into the atmosphere. And that two megawatts is fed into the grid and supplied to regular households on a 724 basis. Mm -hmm. As long as garbage is spawn will be buried here, gas will be formed even after the landfill site closes in approximately somewhere between 2025, 2030. Uh, gas still will be generated many years after, probably at least 10 to 15 years later.